We're making the arrow square and it's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Arrow square crochet pattern is one that's very special to me because I've been wanting to make this particular project since I saw it in my book a long time ago. It is an old pattern and I can't wait to show you how to make it because it's just beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. And it had me so curious how this would look if you made multiple squares and joined them together. The pattern, it just blows my mind. And I'm so excited to show you how to make this. The level of this project, I'm definitely going to be placing as an intermediate level. I mean, it could teeter on easy level. It's not beginner friendly. It really isn't. So absolute beginners, feel free to watch and be entertained by everything that happens in this particular <laughs> square. Uh, Advanced beginners, you may be able to do it. Uh, I know some of you that you could, you definitely could do it if you, if you really slowed down the video and gave it a shot, you could make this happen. The terminology for this pattern, I'm gonna be using US terminology, so whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, I'm using US terms. And the dimensions of this project really depend on a lot of things. It depends on the size of the yarn that you're using, it depends on the crochet hook that you're using, it depends on, uh, if you want to stop at round 10, which I stopped at round 10, but you could take this as big as you wanted, or you could even shrink it down and take out rows if you wanted to as well. I wanted to also show you, so this particular example is a size two weight yarn, is using a two weight yarn where you can see a lot of detail. I also want to give you a little sneak peek. This, this tutorial in particular is going to be very important. You're going to be referring to it again in the future when we use this size three weight yarn it's a, a hank, a hand dyed yarn. We're going to be joining these together in an upcoming video to make a poncho. And this poncho is ridiculously beautiful. It's so exciting. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you do and hit notifications. So when that tutorial comes out, you get notified. I hope that you enjoy. Let's go ahead and dive into what materials I used to make this arrow square. The materials that we are going to use to make this arrow square pattern will include a size two weight yarn. And this yarn in particular, I have the label right here. It's Willow Yarns Gaia in the color Mythical. And it's this beautiful purple eggplant color. And that's what I'm using. But honestly, this particular arrow square, I think would look beautiful with a size two weight yarn, three weight yarn, and four weight yarn. Five weight is pushing it, the bulky chunky. You may start to lose some detail definition in the arrow sections, the middle section here, and even a little bit here with the netting. And definitely losing that completely with the size six and size seven weight yarn. To go along with that, I'm using the recommended crochet hook to go with the size two weight yarn that is on the yarn label, and that is a size E4 or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. And honestly, depending on what size yarn you are using, if you're using the size three or the size four, just go with the recommended crochet hook on the yarn label. Generally, a size three weight yarn will really like the G6 or the 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And the size four weight Aran yarn will really like using the size H eight or five millimeter crochet hook. We'll also need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle or tapestry needle just to weave in those ends at the end of the project. And honestly, I'm going to say this is optional, though I highly recommend a blocking kit. So the blocking foam mat, T-pins, and here I also am utilizing, I mean, I could do the whole thing in T-pins, I just, had these like pin combs here that I was using because I ran out of T-pins because I'm blocking a lot right now. <laughs> uh, and so, but having the ability to block this item is going to be very important. And I'll show you the reason why at the end of the video, what our end product will look like when we're done crocheting it and how blocking will make it so much easier to show the definition in the stitches. And also if you want to make multiple sections, multiple squares here and join them together, 
blocking is going to be a big deal. I'll have links to everything you see here, including all of my blocking materials, the yarn here that I am using, and everything. I'll have all of the links in the description section and comment section below this video. So if you're having trouble getting your hands on anything or you just want to get something really fast, click the link, purchase the item, have it shipped to you. It makes it easy peasy. All right, when you have everything that you need to make your arrow square, let's dive into actually making it. All right, we're gonna begin the arrow square with our yarn and our crochet hook. Great, starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in the end at the end of the project. Slip knot, attach our crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. All right, we're gonna start by chaining seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. And then slip stitch into the very first chain to form a ring or a circle. There we go. Slip stitch. Perfect. All right. For round one, we start by chaining two. One, two. Now that chain two does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Next, we're going to make 19 double crochet stitches inside this circle or inside this ring. So we got one, two, three, four, 17, 18, and 19 right there. Perfect. To close round one, we will slip stitch into the very top or second chain that we made of the chain two right there. And that closes round one, leaving us with this really beautiful circle. Great, okay, moving on to round two. So for round two, we start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. The chain four counts as our very first double crochet stitch plus chain two. The first stitch we are going to make is a double crochet stitch in that first stitch space. Double crochet. And then chain two one, two, then double crochet in the next stitch space, and then chain two. And that's the repeat pattern for round two, guys, is we're gonna double crochet in every single stitch space and make two chains between each double crochet stitch. So again, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, Continue around for round two, and I'll meet you at the end of round two to show you how we close round two and move on to round three. Chain two and double crochet and chain two. We will close round two by slip stitching into the second chain of the chain four we started with. So finding that second chain, slip stitch, and that's like the top of the double crochet stitch. Now when we are looking at our shape here, it looks like a circle or a little flower, we want to count a total of 20 of these double crochet stitches, including that chain two, that chain two counts as a double crochet stitch. So take a second and count all of these double crochet stitches around and make sure you have a total of 20. It's gonna be important. I could see this being a big part where people will find problems later on in this square. All right, moving on to round three. For round three, we start by chaining two. One, two. For round three, we are only working in the chain two sections. That's it. We are going to make double crochet five togs in the chain two sections, and then chain three to bridge over to the next chain two section where we will make another double crochet five tog. So if you're unfamiliar with the double crochet five togs or just need a little refresher, let's do the first one together. You're gonna yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that chain two section, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through only two loops on your crochet hook, leaving two loops behind. And then yarn over, insert your crochet hook back into that chain two space, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through only two loops on your crochet hook, leaving you with three loops. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, we have four loops now. 
yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook. We have five loops now, we need to do this one more time. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook. Now we have six loops on our crochet hook and we are done. So keep going until you have a total of six loops on your crochet hook, that's a great indicator. And then yarn over and pull that yarn through all six loops on your crochet hook and that is your double crochet five tog. Chain three, one, two, three, and repeat. Double crochet five tog, one, two, three, four, five. There are a total of six loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through, and then one, two, three. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round three. I will meet you at the end of round three to show you how we close round three and move on to round four. You're doing great. And last one, one, two, three, ah, four, five, and then after you make your last double crochet five tog, chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that second chain of the chain two that we started round three with. Boom, right there. All right, so this is roughly what we're looking at. Hopefully you're looking at approximately what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> All right, okay, so what I'm noticing right off the bat is it's very roughly. Like it looks like there are too many stitches for this particular project. It's ruffling, it's kind of all over the place. That's okay. We actually need that, we want that to move forward because it starts in round four that we start turning this circle shape into a square, okay? So yes, it may look ruffly, it may look like there's too many stitches. I just want to acknowledge right now that that's okay. So let's go ahead and move on to round four. And like I said, with round four, we're going to turn this shape from a circle into a square. So we're going to start by chaining two. One, two. For this particular section, round four, we're only working in the chain three sections. We're not putting any stitches on top of the double crochet five togs. Okay, so we're just jumping from chain three to chain three to chain three. In the first chain three section, we are going to make three single crochets. One, two, three. In the next chain three section, we're going to make three double crochets. One, two, three. Great. In the next chain three section, we're going to make three treble crochets, chain three, three treble crochets. Here we go. Treble one, treble two, treble three, great, chain three, one, two, three and then three trebles, all in the same chain three spot. One, two, three, great, and that's a corner. That is our first corner space. All right, in the next chain three section, we're gonna make three double crochets. One, two, three, and in the next chain three section, three single crochets. One, two, three. And that is the repeat pattern that we're going to repeat three more times for the three more corners. You got three single, three double, three treble, chain three, three treble, three double, three single. Then three single, three double, three treble, 
chain three, three treble, three double, three single. So there's actually going to be two chain three spaces right next to each other where it's three single crochets and then three single crochets. I want to point this out because I know that I've messed this up a couple times where I've only done one group of single crochet stitches and then moved on with the pattern and you get to the end and you're like, why do I have extra chain three spaces? What I do wrong? <laughs> and that's it. You need to make sure that there are two chain three spaces next to each other where it's three single crochet and then three single crochet. So pay attention to that. All right, go ahead and repeat this pattern three more times all the way around for the three other corners that we have. And I'll meet you at the end of round four to show you how we close round four and how we do round five different. Mm -hmm. And three single crochet to close round four. One, two, three, perfect. So to close round four, we will slip stitch into the second chain of that chain two that we first made when we started round four. Great, so now we actually have a square shape we're working with. It still feels like there are too many stitches. It's still doing that ruffle thing, and again, that's okay. Just addressing it so that way you know it's okay. All right, so for round five, we start actually doing that arrowhead pattern, or that arrow pattern. So we start round five by chaining three. One, two, three. Skip over all three single crochet stitches. Find your three double crochet stitches and make one half double crochet on top of each double crochet stitch. So half double crochet one, half double crochet two, and half double crochet three. Great. Next, we're going to make one double crochet stitch on top of each treble crochet stitch. So double crochet one, double crochet two, and double crochet three. Perfect, awesome. In the chain three section, right here in the corner, we're going to make three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. One, two, three, then one, two, three, and three double crochet again. One, two, three. That's our corner that turns us. All right, three double crochet on top of the three treble crochet. So double crochet one, double crochet two, double crochet three, then one half double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch. So half double crochet one, half double crochet two, and half double crochet three. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip over the first three single crochet stitches and single crochet between the third and the fourth single crochet stitch. And that's what the pattern says. But if that's too weird for you or it doesn't make any sense, then just single crochet on top of the fourth single crochet stitch. It's basically the same thing. There we go. Then chain three, one, two, three. Skip over the next three single crochet stitches and make one half double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch. And that's the repeat pattern, guys. One, two, and three. So let's back it up. Let me show you what, we're, what we are working with here. Okay, so in the corners, every single corner for round five, we're making a, a three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. You're making one double crochet stitch on top of every treble crochet stitch. You're making one half double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch. And then when you get to this three single crochet stitches, you're just going to chain three to hop over them, single crochet between the third and the fourth single crochet stitch, and then hop over the next three, or chain three, hop over the next three single crochet stitches and continue the pattern. All right, if following the actual written pattern helps you out a lot, I know it helped me out a lot just to stay on track, uh, feel free to get that pattern and have it just next to you. It's kind of nice having it next to you so you can follow along. 
but go ahead and continue this pattern all the way around. And I'll meet you at the end of round five to show you how we close round five, which is different. So make sure you, sh you see how we close round five and then how we get on to round six. Two, three. Okay, when we get to the very end of round five, we do not chain three and then close in the middle. And I know a lot of you are gonna wanna do that. Okay, we don't wanna do that for this particular pattern. What we want to do is make a double crochet stitch into that very first stitch space, that slip stitch that we made at the very base of the very first chain, or you can feel free to just double crochet in that first chain here. So double crochet, so I'm gonna go ahead in that base just like that. Because we want our crochet hook to be up here. We do not want our crochet hook to stop down here between these two nets or these two chains. And that is where we're going to begin round six. All right, awesome, we're getting so far into this project. Okay, so to start round six, we will make a single crochet stitch around this double crochet stitch that we made that's sideways here. Don't chain, no chaining yet, just instantly. Round six, start with a single crochet. So take your crochet hook, go underneath that double crochet we made, yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. Then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet around the other chain three single crochet, then chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Skip over all three half double crochet stitches, find the first double crochet stitch, and then we're going to make one double crochet stitch in the next six stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. All double crochets. Great, that's what we're looking at right there. When you get to that chain three section, and honestly from here on out, whenever you reach a chain three section right here in the corners, we're always putting three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. So three double, one, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, three double, one, two, three. Great. After the corner, we will make one double crochet stitch in the first six stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Skip the three half double crochet stitches and single crochet over that chain three, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet over the next chain three, chain five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, and repeat, skip the first three half double crochet stitches, find the first double crochet, make one double crochet stitch in the next six stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, great. Corner chain three, so this gets three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. One, two, three, and three double. One, two, 
three. Double crochet in the first six stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the three half double crochet stitches and single crochet around the chain three. All right, I think you have it. I think you do. Again, if you need to rewind this section for round six as many times as you need to, to get an idea of what that pattern is and just finish round six. Also again, the pattern helps to have by your side so that way you can keep referencing. All right, I'm gonna finish round six. I'll meet you at the end of round six to show you how ending round six is different than ending round five and then what we're going to do differently for round seven. At the end of round six, before we close round six, so you'll know it's the end of round six because there will already be these two chain five sections here. And we didn't start the chain fives until the very first to the very beginning of round six. Okay, to close round six, after you make all six double crochet stitches, you will chain two. You're still gonna chain two. One, two, and then double crochet into that single crochet stitch that we made to begin round six. And there we go. Now, why do we even bother to chain two? Well, by chaining two, it helps to make this section right here the same size as the other sections. And the double crochet for this particular pattern is three chains. So if we have five chains here and the double crochet stitch only counts as three chains, then we add two more to make that five chain equivalent, if that makes any sense. All right. So that is how we're going to close every round for the rest of the project. Chain two and then double crochet into the single crochet. Okay, so we are now on to round seven. With round seven, pay close attention, take lots of notes because you're really repeating round seven for every round after round seven until you're done making your square. Okay, round seven is going to be like that last round that you're going to repeat, the one round you're going to repeat. All right, so for round seven, we start by single crocheting over that double crochet we just made. Single crochet, perfect. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in the next chain five section. Chain five. One, two, three, four, Five, single crochet around the next chain five section. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the first three stitches, the first three double crochets, and make one double crochet in the next six stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Perfect, we've reached the chain three spot, chain three corner, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, Three, great. One double crochet stitch in the first six stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip the last three double crochet stitches. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet around the first chain five. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet around the next chain five. One, two, three, four, five. 
four, five, single cro crochet around to the next chain five, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, skip the first three double crochet stitches and then make one double crochet stitch in the next six stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That leads us to our next chain three corner. All right, so the repeat pattern for round seven here. What you're going to see as a recurring pattern, you're going to skip three double crochets by chaining five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet. Skip these three sing double crochet stitches. You're going to have your chain five over those last and first three double crochet stitches to hop over them. And then you're always going to have six double crochets leading into the corner. And then after the corner, you're always going to make six double crochet stitches. That's staying consistent for the rest of the pattern. Going in six, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, then ending with six. And then hop over everything else, okay? All right, so that is the repeat pattern for round seven. For round eight, you're just going to add one more chain five section, but everything else is the same. Six double crochet stitches, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, six double crochet stitches, hop over the three double crochet going into the corner and hop over the three double crochet after the corner for every single row or every single round, okay? So I hope that helps. Every round after this, you're just going to increase the number of chain five sections by one. So round eight, well, you'll have one more. Round nine, you'll have another one. Round 10, you'll have another one. We're gonna repeat round, or go ahead and finish round seven. I'll show you how we close round seven, and then I'm gonna release you to finish through round 10. I'm only going to chain two, one, two, and then double crochet into that single crochet stitch to close round seven. Great, okay, so what I'm gonna have you do now is I'm going to have you repeat round seven for round eight, nine, and 10. I'll meet you at the end of round 10 to show you why we don't stop there, <laughs> all right? All right, keep going, you got this. I hope you're having fun. It is now that we finish round 10 that we're gonna go ahead and tie off our work entirely. You'll have two ends to weave in, and I'll show you how I weave in my ends real quick with you. So I have this really nifty pin that my friend Mary got for me. It's magnetic, so I keep my yarn needles on that. Don't lose them, which I'm always losing them. You ever have that problem where you lose your yarn needles all the time? So <laughs> this is a nifty pin, but go ahead and thread your yarn through your yarn needle. All right, so how I weave in my ends is I will go through one direction, in and out of yarn, strands, loops, stitches. I'll try to go through yarn so that the fibers cling to each other, which is a nice firm hold. But what really works for me most is after I go one direction, I will double back and go backwards in the direction that I came from. So here is where my yarn is coming out of. I'm going to hop over that stitch so I don't undo everything I just did and go backwards. Again, through some strands, in and out of strands, and that's it. Then grab my scissors, cut that yarn flush, and that's how I weave in my ends. If you have a different way of weaving in your ends than what I do, do whatever works best for you. If you wanna try other ways of weaving in your ends, I have a video that I made lots of different options. If you wanna try it and you check it out, see if one works better for you. All right, so the reason why I wanted to come back at this point in the game, after the, the square, the era square is all done, is because I wanted you to see it. And I wanted you to notice that it's indented, it still looks kind of misshapen, and honestly, if you were to try to join this square with another square, it may be a little difficult because both will be indenting on these inner, in the 
middle of the sides and it may just be a little awkward and weird, especially as things pull and not look as detail oriented as you want. A lot of the details are kind of hard to see, especially in the middle where it still looks like there's a little bit of warp there. If you block your project, you'll get to see a lot more definition. Everything will lay flat for you. And honestly, I do encourage you to try blocking. If you've never done it before, I have a video for beginners. All I did was I held it under water until it was completely saturated with water. And then I rolled it out to discard any excess water. Then I laid it out on the actual blocking mat and I stretched it out. And I stretched it out to 11 inches or 11 squares in each direction. So 11 squares across and 11 squares up and down. That's what I stretched it out to. If you use a different material, if you use a different size yarn, if you use a different size crochet hook, you might be able to stretch your arrow square a different dimension than what I was able to stretch mine out at. So just make sure you don't overstretch it so that way it doesn't fight you, but also don't understretch it and then it doesn't retain its detailed shape the way you want it to. So look at the difference here. Unblocked to blocked. You can see the difference in the details. You can see the difference in the size of it alone. Oh my gosh, it definitely expanded like a whole inch and a half <laughs> in, in both directions. So again, blocking does a big deal and especially look at the detail in the center. Here you can actually see all of that detail. This is kind of lost. It's a little harder to see. It's optional, but I highly encourage it. All right, guys, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below, but I hope you had fun. All right, guys, what did you think of the arrow square? Let me know in the comment section below your experience making the arrow square. If you had any questions at all, please make sure they get in the comment section below. That way I can reply to them and answer those questions. If you do have a question before you type it out in the comment section, read through the comments to see if somebody else asked your question already. I may have already answered your question and you didn't even know it. <laughs> uh, also, please let me know just how your experience was making the arrow square. I'd love to hear the feedback. If you like this video, please push that thumbs up button. It's like a big high five and lets me know that you did enjoy the video. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss my upcoming video. Like I said, I have a video coming up where I join multiple arrow squares together. So if you're even curious how you would join those together, it'll be in this video. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the notifications. That way you get the video when it comes out. All right, if you would like to support my channel or just want a little bit more out of my channel, check out my membership program. I have a couple different levels there, whether you just wanna support my channel and lift me up, or if you would like to join the crafters gathering where we meet once a week and I get to see you, I get to talk to you, and it's this gathering of people, it's amazing. It may be the highlight of my entire week. I just love hanging out with all of these incredible people. All right, so I hope you check that out if you would like a little bit more. If you enjoyed this video, let's keep it going. Check out all my other videos. I have a playlist right here that you can check out of more videos just like this. Or check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I'll see you with the next one, guys. Bye.